Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. And we'll get a re-roll here, if you may, please. Alright. No, this time I got a three. Oh, I'm sorry. I still have your roll from last time. So you rolled an 18. Yeah. Ibis rolled a 10. So are you ready to see this horribleness that comes out of the middle of nowhere? Alright. So as you all are basically standing there trying to... What exactly was it that we were trying to do there for a few moments? Um, okay, so we were venturing and trying... Oh, so we were at the, the broken oven. Yeah, yeah. And there was like a weird plague doctor shoveling bodies in. It saw, it saw um, Raphaelisha and was like, what the fuck? And then just kept going and, you know. Yeah. So all of a sudden, what you see is... You see all these bags that get up. What the fuck? Like, they're standing up, and there's only four of them. And they're sitting near the oven. Like, the scene from before is gone, mm -hmm. and there's just these four bags. And all of a sudden, they stand up, and then they come towards you. Holy fuck. So, let's see. You... We'll figure out what order this goes in, as we'll do a... Oh, that's nice. You go first. Alright. So, let's see. First, I want to, like, look around and see if there is anything that I can beat them with. Well, you do have weapons, so... Yeah, it's more fun to pick up objects from the environment, though. There's, like, baker trays and, like, stuff like that, I guess. Because there are the baking, like, there's all those little bakery stalls and everything. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's, like, a dough cutting board or, like, a dough cutting knife or... Mm, nothing there is quite satisfying. I'll use my, um... My, I'll use my club. That's 1d8. Wait, I think. I don't know. Okay, so give me an attack roll with your d20. I got a five. And then your attack bonus as a barbarian, do you remember what it is? Um. No, we don't have it, do we? Uh, wait, wait, like here? wait, wait, wait. Do you have my attack bonus? No BAV written? Mm. So fucking disorganized. Worst game ever. Uh, okay, so your BAB. As a fourth level barbarian. As soon as I get the fucking page there. It's plus four. Okay. So that's a nine. So it's a nine. I am afraid that will not be enough. That's just a nine for an attack. Okay. Which means that one of them gets their turn to go. Um, what's your AC? Um, it is... Ten. Oh, no, plus four, so it's fourteen. Fourteen plus you bought armor. Yeah. You did not write your armor down. I don't remember if you, you probably did. Wait, wait, it's plus three. There we go. Okay, so 14, 15, 16, 17. So I need to roll 17 or better. Nope. So you see one of these bags come over you, come towards you and seems like it's trying to wave something at you, but it misses. Um, Ivis is going to cast Ray of Frost. <laughs> oh my god, this keyboard won't fucking... Okay. No, the keyboard doesn't like you. It says, how dare you try to be fucking typing shit while playing D&D. &D. I'll fucking show you.
Okay, so, yes, that worked. Three. All right. You see one of them take a swipe at Ibis as well, to no, no effect. Wait, wait, wait. I hate to interrupt you okay. and go off on a tangent. But what does Ibis look like? How do you spell his name? <clears throat> so, going off on a tangent, Ibis's name is spelled I V A S. Okay. He is a, you would say, almost six foot two, large man. He's pale skinned, black hair, black facial hair, has a goatee. Um, that's pretty much it. Okay, because honestly, I was kind of imagining Gargamel. <laughs> No, no, not guarding him out. <laughs> so, the other one's going to take a swipe at Rifus and he, or Ibis, and he, he doesn't get. So, it is back to the top of the order, which is your turn. Alright. Wait, is Ibis cool, or is he kind of sketchy? Looks kind of sketchy. Ah, of course. Everybody's sketchy. Eleven. Okay, no, we need a fourteen or better. So... One of them will take a swipe at you. No, nothing happens. These dice rolls are not happening right now. Let's see. Wait, wait, wait. 17. And I've already cast Ray Frost, so I will do uh, Magic Missile. I need another four. I hear a child cry. I will leave my political uh, answer of what you are hearing in the background, yelling and screaming. Uh -huh. uh, but it's my lovely neighbor's children. Who is that? All the way up to the top Nothing says uh, says unattended children like screaming children. God damn it! I'm just gonna roll this d4 twice. Four. Oh, this is a I don't think I've ever had it before. Five. Is it okay if I have a tiny bit of a disarono? Yes, you may have the D Serrano. Okay, I don't want all of that. It's my type. She said she wants the D. Ah, 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 ah. Three, four, five. Okay, so you see Ibis basically sit there and he points at the creatures and he Whoa, says something. That's good. Oh, you that's, know. That's like real good. It is. And then uh, you see. These lances of light shoot out of his finger and hit the, hit this bag. Whoa! And then it is... Is Raph in, like, complete amazement right now? It depends on how you feel about magic. Holy shit, that is so cool! Magic! Magic! And the second one misses, <coughs> that takes a strike, or tries to strike Ivis. So it's back to the top of the order with your turn. Alright, let's do this shit. <clears throat> I got a, I got a six. Man. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. No, nope. still nothing, huh? Nope, so much you're being big and strong and can beat the hell out of anything with anything. So, okay, we'll go to their turn. Fifteen. Let's see. Fifteen, sixteen. You said your armor class is sixteen? Uh, it's 14. No, your armor class is 16. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. Um, I've got a plus 3. Give me a d20 grapple check. Mm -hmm. Since it hit you. I got 3. Okay, that's not bad. So, uh, what ends up happening is this bag hits you. And then it wraps around you. And then you take... Five points of damage. Yikes. But okay. at 12 times 4, you have 48 points oh. to be able to really be able to be like, ah! Okay, so... 6 times 15. No. <laughs> You know what? I'm not even going to try to math right now. I'm math. Dead. Don't worry. I got you covered. All right. It's like I can't do math, man. Can't do math, man. 
These three dollar gel pens are a great investment. They are sparkly and they smell good. And so they're all over your hands. No, it's fifteen times four. That's your. Oh. So I was. You're I was, at sixty eight hit points. Holy excuse shit. me, and then minus five. Oh. Puts you at sixty six. Okay, so. I was just gonna look at you and go, I don't know if this is gonna work, but then he lets off another chant and the bad creature that's around you, it's kind of muffled. You can't you can't really make out Ivis because he seems to be kind of muffled with this bag that's, you know, trying or trying to get you. Yeah. Man, what is that? Excuse me a second here, because I don't want to cheat you, and I don't want to cheat him. I know that sounds funny since we're sitting here playing a game just between two people, but... It's a story, bitches. It's a story of the rolls of the dice. Okay, so... He's taking a wild chance. He will cast Disrupt Undead. It hits the creature, it takes 1d6 points of damage. So, because it's positive damage, you take 2 points of healing. Okay. Even though that's technically not what it's supposed to, the spell isn't designed like that. Theoretically, if you're letting out a wave of positive energy for 2 points of damage, and it's going to heal it, you know, then that's, that's that. Okay, so... You feel the bag kind of like go around you when he does that. What the fuck? So whatever this bag is, it's not just some animate object. It seems to have some kind of spirit or something inside of it. Okay, so that was his turn going to the other one of these. It makes a swipe at Ivis and misses. If he's trying to, to dance back and forth and it's to your turn and you still have this on, so you can um, try to grapple with it, pull it off, maybe try to do some kind of damage to it with your fist or something. Can I try to sleep with it? Um, basically by slamming yourself into the dirt along with it? Yeah. Um, give me a D8 plus your well, make your make your attack roll first. And I'm going to say you're going to make it at a plus two advantage since this thing is around you. Fifteen. So 16, 17. <clears throat> and then give me a D8 plus your strength modifier. Can you pass me? Yes, of course. I'm sorry. I didn't realize that. Yeah. Like I said, I was going to pass out dice as needed, but... Um, that is a six. Six? Plus the, the um... Your strength modifier. Okay, so that is, is plus three. So that's nine. So that's nine points of damage. So between you and Ivis, Ivis casting two spells at it and you getting this shot in, you just like fling yourself onto the ground as hard as you can. And like it, it, it affects it. Like you feel it go oh, 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 again. <laughs> But not not as much as it really should have. Like you think being, because I mean, it's somehow it seems like this this thing, whatever it is, this bag or whatever, it might be, it might need just like a few more shots to the chop. You know what I mean? Yeah. So okay, so <clears throat> let me see. What else do I have? Um, you hear Ivis go. I'm out of combat spells, but I have a knife. Don't worry. Start stabbing some shit then, dude. So he, uh, he will take a swipe at your bad buddy. Fifteen. Sixteen, seventeen. I think he only has two. Sixteen, seventeen, yeah. So seventeen, and he will do 1d6. So he does, uh, four damage. You feel the bad go. It doesn't really do anything to it. Yeah. 
And then it is um, the other bags, or the bag's turn. Um, it is going to sit there and just do the constrict around you again. So it's not like it's going to do like a huge amount of damage because it seems to be focused on something else. Two. So that's another five points of damage. Yikes. You're still, you're, hey, 66 points of damage, or 66 health points, so I mean. That's true. So that's. You're down to 61. Yeah. All right, my turn. Yes, ma'am. All right. All yeah. right, uh, uh, blah, 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 blah. that was the bag. Yeah. No, that was supposed to be the other bag, excuse oh. me. So the, the other bag. Oh. Well, we'll say that it hits Ivis. And it's, it tries to do a constrict as well, so we'll give him his opposition roll for strength. Oh, nice. So Ibis, uh, Ibis manages to slip out of its grasp, and then it is back to the top of the round with your turn. All right. So if you have bladed weapons or anything. I have... I have an axe. You can use it carefully. You gotta put your eye out with that thing, kid. <laughs> I use the axe to swing it myself. I know it's coming. Say it. Say it. What? I use the axe to swing it myself in the I monster. Use the axe to swing it myself. <laughs> you can put your eye out like that, kid. Let me get a d20 roll. All right. So I guess I'll use one of my throwing axes. Wait, that's really short range, though. Can't it's... I just use it to like? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> oh my god. What? I got a one. Oh. No, that's no. a critical failure. <laughs> no, it's not a critical failure, but I'm going to tell you what happens on a one. Oh, what happens? So, out of one, I need you to give me a fear roll, which uh -huh. is a d20, plus your wisdom modifier. I got a nine. Nine. So plus two. Ten, eleven. So, you are going to take a negative two penalty. For the next, like, we're going to say, because, like, this is the second fear save we've made for three rounds. So it's negative two for the next three rounds. So, okay. So, this is, this is just not going well for you. That's okay, because, you know, knifey knife boy over there might be able to help <laughs> you. So he is going to, to take his action. He got a one. Oh, so great. he is no help either. In fact, when he goes to cut the bag, he always cuts you, <laughs> and you're like, he's like, oh, oh, I'm so sorry. Hold still. I tried to cut the bag off you. <laughs> and you're like, oh shit, fuck, God damn it, don't cut me. All right, so uh, so we're gonna go back to the other bag monster. It's got no luck either because apparently between you two wrestling and the other bag, it has no luck. So. Um, top of the round goes back to you. Oh my god. Alright. I got five. I'm telling you, you gotta switch dice. Yeah. Okay, it's, it's, it's time for you to do a dice switch. Um, you wanna go with this black d20 or you want a white d20? I don't really care. Let's just both. And we'll give you an orange. We'll give you four d20 so you can, yeah, you can get yeah. a little switch out here. Yeah, let me try this orange. Maybe I need a switch out. Maybe that's what it is. Okay, so let's get that attack roll again then. Okay. I got a 17. There oh, that's go. better. That's fucking better. Um, <laughs> 17, 16, 15. So even at a 15, you could still be able to do something. So uh, mm -hmm. give me some attack damage. Alright. This is right. Yep. Wait, your, it's your axe. It's the d6. Yeah. Oh, wait. Yeah, it's the d6. Sorry. Do you have a d6? Yes, I do. I have mine. Four. So that's four points of damage plus your strength. So that's plus three. Three. So, okay. All right. So that gets it a little closer. And then it is the bag monster's turn. Um, since it is already on you, it is going to do the constrict again. Another five points of damage, unfortunately. God damn this thing. I'm like, what the fuck? So that's 57. No. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. 57. Okay. 
Okay, and then it is Ivis' turn. Ten. 12, 13, uh, he's no help e either. You know, if he Dude. rolled, we well, uh, I, well, uh, no, no, it wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't work. I, I got nothing. I got nothing. Ivis, we are getting our ass kicked by a bunch of fucking bags. I'll show you what the bag monster is here in a moment. You're going to be like, fuck, really? And it'll be like, yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway. I'm gonna try slashing at it again. Okay. I got a 12. Okay. So it was a 12. That's nothing. Oh, I'm just gonna roll that attack for that other one. He rolled a 1, so the other monster is useless as well. Alright. So, what we basically have here is, you know, this is not with any adjustments or anything. I would show you my sister's face of, of pure what-the-fuckness, but... That's what makes monsters so much fun when you use them in combat. Um, so that was the top of your turn, and you attack again, right? What'd you get? Um, I got a 12, and you said that wasn't good enough. 12, yeah. <clears throat> so what was your attack bonus? Isn't it like 4? Or like 3? Yeah. So it's 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So yeah, roll your damage. Alright, cool. I got a 3. I got 3 plus your strength modifier. So that's 6. 6? Okay, so... um. The bag monster all of a sudden comes undone. Oh, shit. And there's nothing inside of it. Ah, oh, really? Yeah. So it, it, it was like an empty bag. And whatever may have been in this bag at some time, it looks like the bag is just like somehow animated itself. What the fuck? So the other bag that's trying to tangle with Ivis is like the same thing. Ivis, do you know anything about this shit? He goes, talk... Talk later, kill first! <laughs> Alright. Um, since it's his turn, he'll go. And he, he takes another swipe but with his knife at the uh, at the other bag monster and misses. So it's back to the top of your turn. I got a 13. 13 plus 4? Yeah. Roll for your 13. damage. I got 5. Okay, um, the bag just does, like, that same thing. It doesn't really affect it. You notice that again? Because it's like, what the fuck? I, I don't, I, uh, I'll show you here in a moment. And you're going to be like, what the fuck? Who would, who would put that on a monster? And then when you think about it, you're going to be like, wow, what the fuck? <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> now it's your turn, my turn, its turn. There's a three, so it's back to you. All right. Oh, so that would be a three, so that would be a four. Got a one. A one? Okay, so that's not helping anybody. <laughs> that happens. Oh, I got an 18, so 18 plus 1d6 with my strength damage is a four. You see the bag do that same thing where it's not really affected. In fact, the knife doesn't even seem to really cut into it. It seems to, like... I guess the best way to say it is like it seems to like kind of slip between the coarse weaving of it somehow mm -hmm. and avoid putting a hole into it. So it is your turn again. Alright. I got a six. Seven, eight, I uh, ten. Uh, switch dice. Switch dice with your next roll. But I'll go ahead and go for Ibis. Okay. 12, 13, 14, which is good enough. <clears throat> I got nothing. When he goes to stab it again, you see that same effect. What's up with these fucking bags, dude? The bag misses, and it's your turn. Alright, I'm gonna switch this way. Yeah. <clears throat> like, damn it! There's gotta be something in here. What is this? This isn't a d20. No. Did I hand you like two or three d20s? You did. This is a d20. Okay. Whatever. I know what the dice shapes are, but some you're of gonna, them are like. You're gonna be standing on all these dice. Pre some are prettier than others, and I'm too lazy to order my own dice. Like, Lily, we need to borrow your d20s. 
getting it's... our asses kicked by getting Aww. our asses kicked by uh, fucking. No. I asked mom how the parking, the uh, the situation on the parking, and she's like, oh. Oh. Well, I gotta let you. All right, not bad. That's okay though. Okay, so. Let's get a dice roll from you, buddy. All right. I got a seven. Seven? All right. That is nothing. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Ooh. Finally. Ivis uh, has something, which is a 19, so I don't even have to roll the other one. Um, the bag thing again. <coughs> and it is your turn. All right. I got another... Wait, hold on. I got another seven. Okay, get so... stuff out of the way. Um, so with your turn, all of a sudden, you and Ibis hear the sound of a lute. Uh-oh. And, um... You know your three weirdos? Yeah, are they coming to help? They are apparently have been watching. And you hear one of them strike up a chord and he starts singing Love Will Keep Us Apart by um Oh god, I can't I can't think of who fucking sings the song. I know what you're talking about. But yeah, so he starts singing that and like the other two like take out like hand crossbows <laughs> and like the they they take aim and, like, they shoot at the bag creature. And they miss. No, oh, of course. Thanks, and you, you hear them go, fuck, dude. I fucking missed this bitch. Fucking reload, dude. Fucking reload. <laughs> so, like, you hear them in their insanity. And the other, the third one is singing. So, it's back to the top of the order. And you are it. I got an 11. Excellent, excellent. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Uh, go ahead and roll your damage. Got a five. So it's a five? Okay. So you see the bag thing do that weird thing again? And then you hear, you hear Ivis go, I got him! I got him! I don't got him! No! Ah. In fact, when Ivis goes to cut, he, he accidentally, accidentally cuts his other hand. Ivis, you're gonna kill yourself, And dude. he's like, fuck, shit, fuck, cut. <sighs> so. While this is going on, all of a sudden you hear um, the, the bard guys. They are going to sit there and continue to. He, one of them is going to continue to sit there and he is going to use his. Uh, his loot, and he's going to keep playing that song, whatever it is, to basically sit there and encourage. Um, and then the other one is going to sit there, and they're going to do the two hand crossbow things again. Nice. Um, and both of them will hit. Mm -hmm. They get additions for having. Their buddy sit there and basically provide bardic inspiration. Right. Here we go. Seven, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. It only ignores the first five points of damage, so all of a sudden you see the bag explode. Whoa! And it's empty, just like the other one. What the fuck, man? Yep. And the bard guy goes, oh, man, because that's fucking awesome. No, dude, we don't know what that is. He goes, dude, you were attacked by a bag. I know. He goes, were you tripping? Did you see anything before the bag attack? I mean, I I don't know. I've been kind of wandering around with... Oh, know, man, this sounds like a good time to toke up, bro. The, the man, Ivis, sorry, sorry. Ivis is like, it's okay, you're very shaken. I know. Because the bag was around you so tight. I, I was scared for you. That could have killed me, that could have killed me. And what would you have done without me and my special elf eyes at this moment? I would have had to go back and hire one of these jackasses. <laughs> the three of them look at him and go, dude, that's harsh, man. How can you call us that, man? We saved your bacon. 
Yeah, thank you for that, my dude. He goes, oh, by the way, we should probably introduce ourselves. <laughs> yeah, that I'm Iggly, fun. this is Tuffy, and then I'm Blaine. <laughs> and Blaine? Yep. All right, well, it's nice to meet you guys. He goes, and it's Blaine with an I-N-E. Nice. He goes, but yo, you guys need some help, man. Yeah, you want to come live? He goes, yeah. Like, you cut me in for like, uh, like the three of them turn around and you hear them whispering. (laughs) Okay, okay, how about this? Like, you pay us 20 gold pieces and like, we take whatever we can carry. Uh, I get first dibs though because I was also asked to take whatever I can carry, and like, like I mean. Now, I now, in, in all reality, I will, I will, I will place his voice back in your head. He said to take whatever you can from the house. Oh yeah, that's true. So anything that you steal out, well, you can't really say steal if it's a ghost town. Yeah. I guess you could say loot. So whatever you theoretically loot out here is fine. But, you know, just keep in mind that, you know, we, we are theoretically trespassing. Okay. I say that as your DM in reference to all the characters, though. Okay, okay, so listen. This is a good plan, but when it comes to the house we have to go in, I have to get first dibs, because I was told to carry anything I can out of the house. Now, so, like, we, so we could... We the, could the, tra- the one that's Iggy looks at you and goes... What house are we breaking in, man? Um, uh, I don't remember. What, I don't remember. So, I okay, I as your as your DM, I'll remind you that you are hired to get into the Twain Mansion. Oh yeah, the Twain Mansion. They look at they look at you and go, "Do you have the key?" I didn't know there was a key. No one, no one said anything about a key. Goes, okay, well let's let's go. And Ivis will Ivis as soon as they say a key, he goes, "You did not say anything about the key to me at all." Because the old lady has omitted many details already. Oh, yeah. I will plan on beating her orc for more money. Yeah, I might join you. So I, I, I plan on buying a big belt. <laughs> so maybe hiring an ogre. That would be pretty fun to watch. <clears throat> so, watching an orc get beaten to get the, help and back by an ogre. The whole entire matter of the key. So, Ibis walks up, Ivis turns to you, and, like, you see him, like, you know that he's a wizard. You've seen him, you see him cast a few spells, but you see him take, take, like, a coin, and you see him go, Magic. and it makes Press it disappear, and he goes, he goes, let's see what we do, can do with the key. Okay. And he goes, shall we have them leave us, then, since they know the way? Yeah, we should do that. So Iggy, Iggy looks at you and goes, dude, before we head out, man, I'm going to burn one. <laughs> so he put, he pulls out a paper joint and it's, it's rolled like the same way that you would see them smoke the before. And... Ida stops you from smoking it and goes, I, I, I don't think you should smoke it because the last time <coughs> you saw all those ghosts, you saw, you saw what, that plague doctor you were talking about? Well, some crazy shit, man. <coughs> Maybe we should just let them yeah. Since they are leaving the way. Okay. So, you see Iggy, Iggy, Tough, and Blaine sitting there. <coughs> it was like the same stuff they were doing before. And Blaine goes, oh dude, I should play, I should play us a song, man. Yeah. So he's going to play you, let's say. Um, Holy shit, bro. It's good stuff, isn't it? I so he's gonna play you. Uh, Did he play Ashes to Ashes? 
that's on, like, when I get really high, like, I don't know, it's something that, and it makes you just, like, freeze because it's so high pitched. So he is going to all of a sudden start singing Burn by The Cure. <laughs> In fact, he's going to sit there and he's going to, he's playing it on his little lute. And like the other two start backing him up. Oh my god. So like that, that, that low intro sound, like you hear them, you hear them with like, one of them has like a flute. <laughs> Seriously, he has a flute. So he has this little flute that's carved and has little skulls and stuff on it. So are they all bards? They're all bards. Oh, okay. So you have you have quite literally three bards that have joined the party. Yay. So what's gonna end up happening is like while they're playing is I believe as far as my house rules that bardic inspiration will stack. Nice. So with the three of them playing, they always say that the rule is to round down, but I'm gonna say that the rule is to keep it as what it is. So, like, as long as they're playing and you guys are walking around, it's like a plus six. However, I am going to point out that you guys have already had one encounter with an undead creature. And um, an undead creature is not necessarily drawn by sound. (coughs) <clears throat> a lot of undead creatures are actually drawn by the the uh, physical uh, sight mm-hmm. and sense of mm-hmm. the living. So this isn't anything that you know is going to put the entire party in danger or that you need to be yelling and screaming at them about. Yeah. Now, however, I will point out that if there is anything living inside the city. You know, definitely something like that's going to draw it. Oh, so no. it 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 all depends on the type of undead. You know, if it's like a skeleton, zombie, things like that, you're fine. All right. Well, I guess I'll be okay. One of the things that Ivis is going to point out at this point is, are we sure there are no necromancers? That's... It is it is illegal, but we have already seen these creatures. <coughs> and the necromancer would probably hide out at the temple because he would know where it is. So, we now have this possibility hanging over us. Alright, maybe we should chill a little bit because if we attract the attention of the necromancer, well, I mean, okay. I'm blind and blue <coughs> now, and y'all are just chopped liver. Okay. So, it would not be a good situation for anybody. Everybody would die so in more horrible ways than They others. stop playing. And then, you know, yeah. Iggy looks at Iggy looks at you and goes, "Man, that's harsh. The undead are harsh in my vibe." I know. He goes, "Okay, so, so they stop playing, and they lead you to this. It's kind of like the best way to describe the building would be, you know how the you know how the Greek Parthenon looks, yeah. right?" Okay, so back in its day, there was an interior building that was part of it, and there was this big, huge mechanism and whatnot to open the gates, and it was a big to-do that made you think that the gods were watching and they were present. Yeah. So, okay, so if you were to take that style Mm. of church, and, like, it was gang-banged by a Jewish synagogue, uh, a Catholic church... And like a Baptist church, like you, you would have this building that stands before you. It has like these massive pillars holding up this massive roof, but it seems like any place that could be designed to allow for images and you recognize the nature deities right away because all of a sudden, like there's this symbol of Obadiah, like, right there, with, like, his face made out of, like, the leaves. And it's just, like, the coloration of it and everything is, you've, you know, when you've seen him drawn someplace, it hasn't been, 
like this is this has got to be like one of the fanciest spawned on images you've ever seen of him. Um, and you know, Obadiah's face is of course, um, it's a man, it's an elderly man's face with a mustache and a beard, but it's made up of oak leaves. Like his entire hair and everything is made up of different kinds of leaves and vines. And he's not depicted as being human or elf. He's depicted as being like race neutral. Mm. Um, <coughs> one of the other images that you see on the other side is the goddess Eloa. Um, this is one that you also know. She's also known as the Unicorn Maiden. Um, when like you see her image, it's always the image of a unicorn. So right off the bat, you know that this that this place that this temple and like all these gardens and stuff that you've seen, this is a seems to be another prime example of Afmarian culture, to where it's you can build this bunch of houses, but you have to build this big ass fucking garden. Yeah. Or you have to build like this. Just you you have to replace nature, or nature has to be tended back into it, so yeah. that nature. <clears throat> is standing just as strongly as the structures that are made. Okay, so what was that unicorn goddess's name? Her name is Ilonha. How do you know how you And it's spelled E-H-L-O-N-N-A. Oh, okay. So, you notice these two symbols, but you notice a couple other that you've never seen before. Um, you see this giant silver image on one of the pillars where it's a hand gripping a lightning bolt like this. Like it's holding it up. Like it's it's not throwing it, but it's like it's holding it up defiantly. And then on the other side, like above one of one of like a it's like an, another window on the side. Because of your dark vision, you're really able to pick this up. It's an image of like where somebody has taken like four maces and they've crossed them and then in the intersection, they've laid spears. And then one of the other images that you see is you see this. It's not necessarily a cross, but it's like an eye. And it has a circle. So it's like a, it's an eye, a circle, and then like four arrows leading into it in a cross-like pattern. Yeah. And then at each of those points, there's like a, a different colored dot of dot of coloration. Um, and like you hear a, you hear a, um, Ibis. He goes, you not see no signs of new rule. It was on the holy house, it is. And the others look at him, and and he he like. Seems like he didn't, he didn't, he doesn't acknowledge that he said it at all. Mm -hmm. Um, if you want to give me a knowledge, uh, just like a knowledge religion check. I got a 14. So, you've heard the name of Nerul before. Nerul is like <clears throat> this. He's like the Grim Reaper. Like how we consider the Grim Reaper. In this world, Nerul is... He's a god of death, and he, his, his followers will sometimes, like, go out of their way, you know, sometimes they're necromancers, um, sometimes they're individuals who not are always on the best course, follow no. the rule. Um... Narul? Yeah, it's spelled N E R U L L. Oh my god, look at how poorly <laughs> I spelled that shit. Yeah, it's not. It, you're, no, you're, you're falling it off the, off the, um, pronunciations. Whatever, I'll fix that later. But so, when you come up to this big, huge, like, combination temple, you notice that, you know, Unlike the Parthenon that I was talking about earlier, the doors don't automatically swing open for you. 
Um, instead, like, when you go up to the doors, there's these big, huge candles, and they're unlit. So, like, you need, the doors are closed and stuff, so you yeah. can try the doorknob or whatever and whatnot. But so, and that's, that's where you stand, buddy. All You're right. now in front of the temple. <laughs> um, shit, I don't know. So, do you wish to go in, or you want to ask a little advice from your NPC party that you have going? Yeah, hey, you guys, uh, particularly Ivis, <coughs> what do you suggest mm-hmm. we do? I suggest that we tie the three idiots together and force <laughs> them in first and then poke them with stick and ass. That way when they walk forward we can see if anything <laughs> horrible happens. <laughs> you know, it's, it's like the old wizard's trick where you use a familiar to see if a hallway is trapped. You can always replace the familiar even though its feelings are going to be hurt or it's wounded or it's dead. <laughs> It's always replaceable. I say same thing with these three. <laughs> Baby looks up and goes, uh-uh. Uh-uh. <laughs> I'm not being tied to anybody, man. That's how the vampires get you. And then that begins a whole entire conversation amongst <laughs> those three of how exactly a vampire goes about sneaking up on you and getting oh, you. <laughs> so you, this is, this is like counterproductive hey, a little. Guys, bit. guys. Focus. All right. So, if okay, <clears throat> I mean, we can't all just rush in all at once because you know if there's something horrible in there that's gonna eat us. Boom. That's it. Game over. So I suggest that we like buddy up. Okay. One of the other things is like you're trying to figure this out. And talking, not to cut you off or make it sound like something horrible is going to happen. Let me just further describe that this entire groundwork that's laid out around this temple is... <coughs> there are lantern motifs that are part of the landscape. So it looks like at some point in time that this place was supposed to be lit with a bunch of light. Um, you can also tell that by just looking at some of these stained glass windows and everything. So, but as you're trying to, as you're trying to talk about it and everything. Hmm. <laughs> Maybe we should light some of these lanterns. Okay. Um. <laughs> uh, 